In the last lecture, we had introduced the concept of a density matrix and looked at its property both for pure state and for mixed states. In particular, we talked about certain properties of the density matrix, namely irrespective of whether it is a pure state or a mixed state, the trace of the density matrix is equal to 1. In both cases, the expectation value of an operator A is given by taking the trace of the product of the density matrix with the operator A. The a consequence thereof is that if you have a pure state, then the square of the density matrix is the density matrix itself and that is because the density matrix has a simple structure that is ket psi with bra psi so that when you take a square you get the same thing back. Now that leads to trace of rho square is also equal to 1 for a pure state. This is however not valid for a mixed state because one can show that trace of rho square will be less than 1. Now what we want to do today is to take you back a little bit and remember that for a pure state, for a single qubit pure state, we had a geometrical representation on a block sphere and we will try to see whether there is an equivalent situation for the case of a density matrix. And again I am talking about the Hilbert space in two dimensions that is uh, the mixed system of single qubit states. So look at what the block sphere actually represented. So what the block spheres did, it was a unit sphere Let me say that this is the equatorial circle. So I take the this as the z axis, this as the x axis and the y axis. Now what we had said is that every state has a position on this block sphere, every single qubit state has a position on this block sphere and where is this position? Now this is decided by that supposing you take the Pauli matrix along the direction n. Now the uh, state corresponding to psi is given by that ray in that direction n for which sigma n has an eigenvalue plus 1. That put our state on the north pole to be 0, on the south pole to be 1 and the point where the x axis intercepted the equator as 0 plus 1 by root 2 etcetera etcetera. Now this state psi corresponding to the eigenvalue plus 1 of sigma n was shown to be given by cos theta by 2 e to the power i phi sin theta by 2. So corresponding to this state, we can calculate the density matrix so that the density matrix which is the product of psi with psi, ket psi followed by bra psi, you can simply multiply the column vector with the corresponding row vector and show that this is given by 1 plus cos theta by 2, let me take the 1 over 2 outside, e to the power minus i phi sin theta e to the power plus i phi sin theta and 1 minus cos theta. This is nothing but a simple matrix multiplication, matrix direct multiplication. 
Now, as I told you, any 2 by 2 matrix can be expressed as a linear combination of identity matrix and the 3 Pauli matrices namely sigma x, sigma y and sigma z. Now, this has very simple structure. So, you can immediately see that this is i by 2 which is this 1, 1 and this, this plus half of sin theta cos phi sigma x plus half of sin theta sin phi sigma y. Recall that sigma x had 0, 1, 1, 0, sigma y had 0 minus i, i 0. So, therefore, if you expand this e to the power minus i phi as cos phi minus i phi, this is fairly straightforward. And of course, you have cosine theta times sigma z. Of course, 1 by 2 again. So, this thing can be written as 1 over 2, you have an identity matrix there plus n the unit vector n which has component sin theta cos phi sin theta sin phi and cos theta dotted with the Pauli vector sigma. So, this is the you know expression for rho which is obtained fairly straightforward. And uh, you look at the components of n which gives you theta and phi, choose a particular theta phi, go over on the block sphere and you can find out a position um, on the block sphere corresponding to any state psi that you have. Now, what we can do is we can now look at what happens to point this remember we said it is a unit sphere and we talked only about the points on the surface of the unit sphere. Now, what we want to do is this that we would see that the points within the block ball, block sphere, block ball, both interchangeably used terms, the points inside the block sphere correspond to mixed states. Now, as we have already said, the mixed states do not have a state representation mixed states do not correspond to it, a particular vector, but you can write down the density matrix corresponding to it. But the reverse of course is not true. If I have a state, it corresponds to a density matrix. So, therefore, all points on the surface of the sphere also represent density matrices, but corresponding to the pure state. So, what we are going to show now is that the points inside the block sphere, they represent a mixed state. So, let us look at how does it work. Okay. So, let us look at a representation of rho which is half i plus. Now, remember I had a unit vector n dotted with sigma, but I am using a vector a dotted with sigma. Define this. Now, if you do this definition, with modulus of a less than equal to 1. What you can find is that this represents a state which is a density matrix corresponding to a mixed state. Now, let us look at this picture. So, I have said that it is representing half i plus a dot sigma with modulus of a less than 1 look at the slide here. Now, supposing I am looking inside the block sphere, a point which is here, which is one third way up, say this is a unit sphere, one third way up along the z axis. Now, we will show just now that this represents this state 2 by 3 0 0 plus 1 by 3 1 1. The uh, point here, the center it corresponds to 1 by 2 0 0 plus 1 by 2 1 1. 
Now let us see uh, how does it work out. So let me take z component to be equal to a by 3. So in that case my rho in corresponding to this is half i plus 1 by 3. So z component is a by 3 I have said and my a is of course uh, the sorry let me take z component to be equal to a z to be equal to 1 by 3. So this is sigma z by 3. So this is equal to half 1 plus 1 by 3 of course off diagonal elements are 0 and since sigma z has minus 1. So this is 1 minus 1 by 3 which is equal to 1 over 2 4 by 3 0 0 2 by 3 and uh, this you can trivially show is equal to 2 by 3 0 0 plus 1 by 3 1 1. So this is what uh, that point corresponds to. Suppose you are to calculate the expectation value of let us say x component of sigma. This is given by trace of sigma x rho by definition. So this we can expand it now trace of sigma x. Remember we said that the rho can be written as i plus well there was a 1 over 2 there a x sigma x plus a y sigma y plus a z sigma z. Remember that sigma x square is an identity matrix, but sigma x sigma y product is i times sigma z etcetera and the trace of each of the Pauli matrices is equal to 0. So therefore, if you carry on the multiplication through, you get this term will give you 0 because it is trace of sigma x, but there is a term here which is a x times sigma x square. So therefore, I get half trace of sigma x square times a x which is equal to a x. So these are 2 by 2 matrices. So therefore, this is nothing but a x itself and likewise you can show sigma y average is a y a z etc. You calculate trace of rho square. The trace of rho square is trace of 1 by 2 square which is 1 by 4 plus i plus a dot sigma whole square. Expand this out again 1 by 4 taken out. Now when I expand this by first writing a dot sigma as a x sigma x plus a y sigma y plus a z sigma z. So this is a uh, sum of 4 terms when you take a square you would say there are too many terms but the problem is not that difficult because these will contain the cross terms which are products of sigma x sigma y which are nothing but i times sigma z and trace of that will be equal to 0. The only terms which will not be equal to 0 are those for which I get sigma x square, sigma y square, sigma z square. In other words, I will be simply left with 1 over 4 i square plus a x square sigma x square plus a y square sigma y square plus a z square sigma z square. trace of sigma x sigma x square is identity. So therefore I am left with a x square plus a y square plus a z square which is nothing but mod a square. So therefore this quantity is 1 plus mod a square divided by 2. The factor of 2 in the numerator comes because of the trace of identity matrix is equal to 2. So you notice again that since we have said modulus of a is less than 1. So trace of rho square for this case as expected is indeed less than 1. So therefore the point satisfies 
all the properties that you require for a mixed state density matrix. So, therefore, the uh, position of a point inside the block sphere tells you that what is its location of the mixed state. Now, having done that, let us go over to another point of interest. Now, as we have pointed out several times, our systems are never closed systems. They usually interact with environment, surroundings. The surroundings by definition need not be a very big system. For example, I could have a one qubit system interacting with another qubit which is of not interest of interest to me. So, I talk about a system of interest which I say is A and anything which interacts with it which is of not of my interest, I call it the environment and let us designate it as system B. So, in other words, I have of necessity to deal with A composite system consisting of A and B, but my interest is not on this composite system, but to get or extract out of it the properties of the system A which is the system of interest to me. Now, how do I do it? Now, this is done by a prescription which is taking reduced density what reduced density matrix does is to in some sense average out the environment and the definition is shown here on the slide. What I am trying to say is if you take partial trace of the environment. So, my density matrix of interest rho A is obtained by taking the trace over the environment which I have called as B of the density matrix of the composite system. Now, you can see immediately how why it happens. Supposing you take, let me work it out here. Supposing you take, let us look at how what does this trace with partial trace mean. Supposing I have a trace of a thing like this A1. A2, B1, B2, so arbitrary A1, B2, A1, B1, etc. But but these belongs to the Hilbert space of my interest, and this is your environment. So when I say that take the trace, partial trace with respect to this, this will give me A1, A2 times trace of this quantity b1 b2. Now, this is a number and you can see what is this. Supposing I have a basis E i in this space, then what is my trace of b1 b2? By definition of trace, it is sum of the diagonal elements, sum over i, E i, B 1, B 2, E i, diagonal elements. Now, I can do the following. Since these are scalar products, I can interchange the order. So, I will write it as sum over i, B 2, E i, E i B 1, but notice that this is a density matrix corresponding to basis state E i and if you take a sum over i because of the completeness that gives me an identity. So, therefore, this is nothing but B 2 B 1 scalar product. So, in other words when you take the trace of things like this, there is a simple prescription that you simply change the order and take the scalar product. So, that is what we get.
So the question that you would ask is why do I take a partial dose? We have already physically pointed it out that uh, taking a partial trace is required because we want to extract information about system of interest and we would like the environment in some way to be averaged out. So, let us suppose M is a an observable on our system A. Let me say M tilde this is a measurement that I do on the composite system A B. Now, obviously, I am interested in making finding out the result of measurement on the system of interest. But however, I am constrained to make the measurement on the composite system. Now, suppose I have a basis an Eigen basis for the system A. Then my composite system can be written as let us say uh, an Eigen state M. So, this is an Eigen state of the system A. Direct product with let us say psi which represents an arbitrary state of system B. Now, then since this is the Eigen uh, basis, I can write down my m tilde as sum over m using the spectral decomposition projection operator pm so in other words i am interested in making a measurement on pm in the next lecture we will be talking about the how the measurements are taken and so this thing is nothing but my m cross ib where m is operator corresponding to observable on A. So, if I take now trace of rho A with M, and I want this to be trace of rho A B with M tilde. I need this because uh, I have to make a measurement on the comp composite system M A B and M is an operator on A. So, this supposing I had a pure system this is what my result would have been, but since I have a comp composite system this is what I have. So, therefore, this I can rewrite as equal to trace of M cross I B which is your M tilde expression rho A B when I am taking a trace it is immaterial which order I write it. Now, if this relation is going to be equal to that relation. You can see that this is simply obtained if you decide that this rho A is given by taking the trace over B of rho A B. So, this is this is uh, the story of the reduced density matrix. I will close this session with a an example. Supposing I take the entangled 2 qubit state, the Bell state 0 0 plus 1 1 by root 2. Now, you can immediately calculate the density matrix corresponding to this, which is half 0 0 0 0 plus 0 0 1 1 plus 1 1 0 0 and of course 1 1 1 1. Now, remember that this is a pure state, pure state it is a bell state 
Now, suppose I am interested in calculating item of interest is first qubit. So, what I want to do is to trace take the trace over the second qubit of this row because this row was on the composite system. Now, what do I get? We have already stated that if you are taking a trace over the second qubit, so what would I get from here for instance? This will give you there is a half outside let us keep it like that. This will give you 0, 0 trace of 0, 0. This is corresponding to the first qubit and this corresponds to the second qubit. But we have just now shown that this is nothing but the scalar product of this with this which is equal to 1. And likewise you can write down say for example, this one will be 0, 1 and scalar product of 1 with 0 which is 0. So, this term is not there. Likewise, this term will not be there, but this term will be there. So, I will be left with half of 0 0 plus 1 1. What is the interesting thing? This is a mixed state. So, I started with a pure state which were entangled state. When I averaged over the second qubit, the state that I got was a mixed state density matrix. That it is a density matrix you can check immediately because by identity resolution this quantity is nothing but i by 2. So, the before I leave this topic of density matrix which we have taken uh, last 2 or 3 lectures, it is probably appropriate to summarize what we have got. What we said is frequently we need to talk about systems which are not closed, systems which are parts of an ensemble and when that happens the original postulate of quantum mechanics saying that a quantum state is represented by a ray uh, in the Hilbert space that does not hold good anymore. To take care of such systems we need to define a density matrix we obtained the properties of density matrix, properties like trace of rho equal to 1, it is a Hermitian positive operator etcetera and we related it to the expectation value or we related the expectation value of physical observables to the density matrix by saying for instance that if you take wanted expectation value of an operator A, it is given by trace rho A. We also talked about how to distinguish a pure state from a mixed state because their trace though trace of the density matrix is equal to 1 for a pure state square of the density matrix is equal to the density matrix itself. So, these were the properties of the density matrix which we considered in the last 2 or 3 lectures.